Look, I know that not many people, myself included, see Joe Biden as a real threat. However, is it within the realm of possibility that he could still very well win the nomination? Yeah, it is possible. And if Donald Trump's victory taught us anything, it's that we should never underestimate our opponents. Because, like it or not, he still does have a shot, even if, you know, his chances have drastically gone down. He's still polling in first place nationally. He's still nine points ahead in Nevada, 19 points ahead in South Carolina, two points ahead in California, and almost 10 points ahead in the state of Texas. Now, of course, this could change. These polls just present us with a snapshot in time, and he could very well continue to plummet. That being said, don't count him out yet. It's still entirely possible that he could be the nominee. I think, you know, most likely he's going to lose, but he could win. Now, the fact that it's even a possibility, it really is puzzling to me because he has ran one of the worst campaigns I think I've ever seen. I thought that back in 2016, you could never run a campaign as bad as Hillary Clinton. I think he's running a worse campaign than Hillary Clinton, because even though he's slightly to the left of Hillary Clinton on a number of issues, Hillary Clinton was at least competent enough to defend herself, right, and downplay uh, credible accusations of corruption and whatnot, but Joe Biden, I mean, he's flailing, and I'm not just talking about the numerous gaffes, which we'll get to that, but on top of the gaffes, he's making decisions, not by himself, I'm assuming, that are bizarre when it comes to campaign tactics and strategy. For example, he is really going all in on no malarkey, <laughs> and he's currently going on a no malarkey tour, and he literally put the words no malarkey on a giant bus because I guess that he thinks this is what's going to uh, appeal to voters, maybe? And in spite of the promise of no malarkey, well, there has been some malarkey at campaign stops. So, for example, at this campaign event, you can see that he was sucking on his wife's finger. Now, this was captured on video, and we get a little bit more context with the video version. Um, take a look. And when they cut to the President of the United States, <laughs> you call your kids in from the other room because you want them to hear what the President of the United States has to say. So first of all, at least that was his wife and it wasn't some random woman or child that he was doing that to. Second of all, I don't understand why when like his wife accidentally almost slapped him in the face, his first instinct was to literally suck her finger. Like, <laughs> why? And you know, for the promise of no malarkey, it's literally, on the podium, that is what I would describe as malarkey. But for some reason, his supporters love that he uh, doesn't like malarkey. Because um, at the second debate, I believe, one of his supporters told Jordan Sheridan that that was basically the highlight of the debate for them as a Joe Biden supporter. What, what was your favorite line of Biden tonight? Uh, I'm very glad he said malarkey once again. That's oh, ma malarkey was a big one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so anything on policy or substance or just malarkey? Oh, just malarkey. I mean, honestly, I haven't been, I haven't been that impressed. I'll be completely honest. By Biden? With you. No, not really. So, I mean, Joe Biden is offering nothing to voters with the exception of a promise of no malarkey. Now, no malarkey has essentially been a catchphrase of Joe Biden for quite some time, and MSNBC put together this compilation showing how many times he has used the phrase Malarkey. And I read this malarkey that comes out of your meetings. And I say, whoa, wait a minute. I hope everyone will drop this stereotypical malarkey. Mr. President, is this more of this Texas malarkey? I guarantee you, Barack Obama ain't taking my shotguns, so don't buy that malarkey. With all due respect, that's a bunch of malarkey. He cares about the middle class? Give me a break. That's a bunch of malarkey. It's more than malarkey, man. It's more than malarkey. So this idea is a bunch of malarkey, what we're talking about here. Not to be ageist, but I have literally never heard anyone under the age of 60 use the word malarkey unironically. But, I mean, if you're a Joe Biden supporter, this is a major selling point, and he knows that because he put it on a bus. Literally. <laughs> How he has any supporters is 
baffling to me. It's genuinely baffling to me. Now, we learned a little bit more about Joe Biden over the weekend because another clip from the infamous speech where we learned about Corn Pop emerged, and this is basically him babbling incoherently for about a minute and what he says doesn't really make a lot of sense, but what you can extract from what he's saying, it does have really creepy implications to it. Here I saw that made me aware when I was in law school, proudly for Holloway, proudly for your dad, first African-American state senator in the state of, in the state of Delaware. Everything about... And by the way, you know, I sit on the stand and it get hot. I got a lot of, I got hairy legs that turn, that, 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 that turn uh, um, blonde in the sun. And the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down so it was straight and then watch the hair come back up again. They'd look at it. So I learned about roaches. I learned about kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. And I tell you what, the men, they're now all men, the guys I work with down here, and they're all guys at the time. They're all good men. Most of them made an awful lot of themselves. And Earl Larkin had a rough time. And some of you knew Earl. I, def I came back as a public defense. I mean, <laughs> quote, I got hairy legs that turn blonde in the sun. And the kids used to come up in the pool and rub my leg down <laughs> and then watch the hair come back up again. So I learned about roaches. <laughs> I learned about kids jumping on my lap and I've loved kids jumping on my lap. <laughs> Joe, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, look, I'm not just covering this because I want to dunk on Joe Biden, even though I enjoy doing that. The reason why I think we have to talk about this is because does anybody have any confidence in Joe Biden whatsoever to actually beat Donald Trump? Can that person who just talked about that, about kids who would rub his leg down in the pool and watch the hair come back up again, and roaches. Does anybody believe that that person can beat Donald Trump? No. He's a huge liability in the general election, and yet he still technically does have a shot at the nomination. If he could win, I think that Donald Trump may actually beat him worse than he beat Hillary Clinton. Like, we're looking at Trump winning the popular vote and the Electoral College, which would be a catastrophe, right? Because that means that Donald Trump definitely will fill another one to two Supreme Court seats, and then the split will go from 5-4 to 6-3 or 7-2. It's a disaster. An unmitigated disaster. So, I mean, in the event Joe Biden is the nominee... The only thing between Trump and the White House for another four years is that person who you just heard, who's running on no malarkey. We are so fucked if we are forced to share a party with people who think that that person is the most electable. I mean, somebody running that poor of a campaign should have been out already. Like, Joe Biden should have dropped out. But the fact that he's still in this, in spite of the bad fundraising, in spite of plummeting in the polls, the fact that he's still viable, even as much as he is, shows that we've got a lot of problems in this country. It's not just Republicans who are the problem. It's also Democrats. So what this tells us is, win or lose, we have to really be a lot more vocal at pushing for electoral reform. We can't just have this two-party duopoly any longer. We need ideological diversity because when you are forced to put centrists and, you know, people on the left together in one party, 
this is what we have to deal with. We have to share a party with people who think that no malarkey is uh, going to captivate young people to get out and vote. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. Uh, Joe Biden is a joke. And to a degree, I feel bad for him because his family should really step in and say, look, Joe, we know you don't have to do this. You know, you are losing your cognitive capacity. You can't really campaign. Let's just, let's call it a day. Let's go home. Let's let Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren or Pete Buttigieg battle this out. We don't have to do this any longer. But I mean, he's still in this. Yeah, we're doomed. If he wins, we are absolutely doomed. Beta male, not a beta male.